Zephaniah was descended from royalty, tracing his lineage four generations back to good King Hezekiah. He prophesied during the reign of King Josiah and was a contemporary of Jeremiah and Nahum and Habakkuk. Zephaniah likely helped prepare the nation of Judah for the revival that took place under Josiah's rule. He was a fiery prophet with hard words of doom and gloom, but his zeal was evidently contagious, leading to an exciting period of national renewal and reform, however short-lived it may have been. One of the most interesting things I've noticed about the prophets of old is that God often raised up a chorus of voices around the same time to speak as a kind of cohort, essentially reinforcing the same message, but each with their own emphasis, accent, and inflection. Second Chronicles 36 puts it this way, The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent word to them again and again by his messengers, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they continually mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, until there was no remedy. As we've already noted, Jeremiah and Nahum and Habakkuk and Zephaniah were all given messages from God around the same time. There was even overlap between the ministries of Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and Obadiah. Earlier, in the days leading up to and surrounding the reign of King Hezekiah, Isaiah and Amos and Hosea and Micah were carrying out their prophetic ministries. Much later, after the exiles returned from the Babylonian captivity, Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi all prophesied to the people of God in the era of Ezra and Nehemiah. All of this does not even take into account the multitude of other voices that God raised up over the years to speak to his people. Some are mentioned by name like Elijah and Elisha, or Huldah the prophetess, or Hanani and his son Jehu the prophet. Others are simply referred to generically as a certain man of God or one of the sons of the prophets. Yet just as Paul affirmed at Lystra in Acts 14, God never left himself without witness. He was constantly raising up multiple voices from all quarters to speak on his behalf, God himself communicating through human agents. Psalm 19 reminds us that all down through the ages, even the heavens are continuously declaring his glory in silent witness to his great faithfulness, power, and love. What Zephaniah tells us is that in the coming day, known prophetically as the day of the Lord, God himself will address the nations in his own person. Zephaniah 3 verse 8 says, Therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day when I rise up as a witness. Indeed, my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out on them my indignation, all my burning anger, for all the earth will be devoured by the fire of my zeal. Revelation 1 refers to Jesus as the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. In his first appearing, he testified of the Father's love, who gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. But in his second coming, he will appear as the judge, bearing witness to God's wrath and indignation against all who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1 says, this, God, who spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the world. In the words of Michael Card, his final word was Jesus. He needed no other one. He is the one, Psalm 69 prophesied, would be consumed by zeal for God's house the one who demonstrated that zeal in John 2, cleansing the temple of all the merchants and money changers who had turned it into nothing more than a place of business. And he is the one who Zephaniah promises will rise up again as a witness against the nations in that coming day of the Lord, when all the earth will be devoured by the fire of his zeal. In that day, there will be no questioning the patience, the justice and the righteousness of the Lord in bringing it all about, for he has not left himself without witness. Father, thank you for the Lord Jesus. Thank you that he speaks to us now from heaven with a clarity and urgency that's hard to ignore. We would not refuse him who is speaking, Lord, but willingly submit to his righteous claims upon our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.